Welcome everyone to 5.4, the final section in chapter five here in Math 133, work. In this section, we're gonna be having fun lifting buckets out of wells, we're gonna be stretching springs, and we're gonna be pumping fluid uh, out of containers and stuff. And to do all of this, well, this will be an application of integrals, right? So we're gonna use integrals to find work. And a big part of that is gonna be determining the equation for some force in a given situation, because this, is, it turns out, will help us the work. All right, so let's get to it with a definition. So in this section, we're going to define work done in moving an object from a point A to a point B as, we'll usually denote it with this W here, a nice limit as n goes to infinity. You should think about this as being areas of rectangles, and we're letting infinitely many rectangles. Those rectangles have height f of x of i star and width delta x and of course this looks a lot like our definite integral and the big thing here is that this f of x is force so we need to determine for force then we integrate that over some distance and that gives us work let's practice with an example here so we have a particle located a distance x feet from the origin force x squared plus 2x pounds acts on it we want to know how much work is done so using our definition, well, from x equals one to x equals three of f of x dx, we can substitute in our particular force definition. Our force is this x squared plus two x, and this is pounds. Uh, and we should think a little bit about units here, right? So this dx, this is gonna be in feet. So when we integrate this thing, we're gonna have units of foot pounds. So let's go ahead and integrate it from one to three. And again, our units are foot pounds. So if I plug in three into this x cubed over three and x squared, get 27 over three plus nine. Then I plug in my one and subtract that whole quantity away. Again, our units are foot pounds. And now we can simplify this a little bit. So this is gonna be a nine plus another nine. So that's gonna be 18. And then one third plus one is gonna be four thirds, subtract that away. And let's get a common denominator. And our final answer is 50 thirds. And again, our units are foot pounds. Okay, so let me make a quick comment here about the units for these things. As it turns out, there are some common units uh, for work. And we've come across one of these common units. The first one is foot pounds, as we saw above. And the other one is Newton meters. So you should be kind of looking for these foot pounds and Newton meters when you do problems. Okay, one example down. Let's do a couple more. So now, like I promised, we're gonna be lifting buckets out of wells. So we have this 10 foot cable, which weighs 50 pounds and a bucket, which weighs 60 pounds, hanging down a well. How much work must be done to lift the bucket out? And what I wanna do is I wanna think about this as two problems. First of all, how much would it take to lift the bucket up and we know no matter where it is in this well, right, it's 10 feet down originally, it's 60 pounds. So there we go. This is a pretty boring integral, zero to 10. And we have our units, foot pounds, one of these common units. So we get 600 foot pounds at the end of the day. Now the more complicated one is the cable. So the cable, again, it's gonna be some integral from zero to 10, but it weighs 50 pounds initially, right, this entire 10 feet thing weighs 50 pounds. And so when it's hanging all the way down, you know, this 10 feet down, there it is, 50 pounds. But when I start raising it up, it's weighing less and less, right, because there's less hanging there. So right, if I raised it up five feet, there would only be 25 feet hanging there. So its weight is changing, you know, based on what X is, based on how this is moved. And so what I want to think of is 50 pounds per 10 feet, right? So that's going to be five pounds per foot. So for each foot that I lift it up, it's going to weigh five pounds less. And it initially starts at 50 pounds. So this is going to be the integral of 50 minus 5x, right? Because if I plug in zero for x, I would get out 50. If I plugged in one, I would get out 45, so on and so forth. So this requires a little bit of thought, right? Now that we have the setup done, we can integrate this. 
just like we did in Calc 1. Again, noticing that our units are foot-pounds. Uh, pounds per foot. Let me rewrite this. Foot-pounds. And now we can plug in the 10. Of course, when we plug in 0 into either x or x squared, it's going to be 0. And so this is 500 minus 250. So that gives us 250 foot-pounds. So combine that with the bucket, which we know is 600. Altogether, uh, that should give us 850 foot-pounds. So that's how much work it would take to lift the bucket and, of course, the cable out of this nice well. Okay, one last thing for this video. So I want to talk a little bit about a special case of work, and that's going to be for springs. And for springs, we're going to use Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law states that the force required to maintain a spring stretched x units beyond its natural length is proportional to x. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> right? So that means that the force is equal to some constant k times x. And we call this case, and uh, this k usually the constant of proportionality, it's a positive constant. All right, so let's try a spring example here. We have a force of 40 newtons is required to hold the spring that has been stretched from its natural length to 10 centimeters to a length of 15 centimeters. So that's five centimeters more. So we can think X is five centimeters here. How much work is done in stretching the spring from 14 centimeters to 16 centimeters? All right, so now this is looking for work Right? Before we had force as 40 newtons, now we're looking for work. Well, here we go. We have our force is k times x, so our force 40 newtons is some k times x, and that distance is 5 centimeters. So the units will become important here, you'll see. So altogether, k is this 8 newtons per centimeter. We're trying to figure out the work done by stretching it from 14 centimeters to 16 centimeters. So if we start looking at the units here, we have this 8 uh, x dx, and sorry, let me rewrite this a little bit. So we have 8 newtons per centimeter, and then x, right, because our force is kx, and x we're going to be centimeters, and then our dx is also in centimeters. So we can see these things kind of cancel and our units are Newton centimeters. Now if we were to integrate this from 14 to 16, well you can see we get our 4x squared. And now we can plug these things in. Let me factor out this 4. And if I square 16, that's 256. And if I square 14, that's 196. Subtract these, we get 60. And so 4 times that is 240 Newton centimeters. Now this is a little bit weird. We don't usually use these units, so I want to change these to Newton meters because this is what you're more likely to see in web work, on exams, things like that. So in order to do that, I'm going to divide by 100 to transform centimeters into meters. And our final answer is 2.4 Newton meters. All right, so we're about halfway through this section now. Go ahead, take a quick break and stretch your legs, and I'll see you in video two.